Okay. And uh, Shiva is uh, an inventor of email. He's the founder and CEO of Cytosol and lecturer at MIT. Apart from uh, being a computer scientist, uh, he and, and also a biological engineer. So he has four degrees from MIT and uh, an inventor. Uh, really, it uh, you know, represents uh, um, the spirit of Thai in a very fundamental way. Over to you, Shiva. Thanks. Thanks, Shaker. I want to thank, uh, I think, uh, all the people with Thai who have helped organize this. I think you've done a great job. Thank you very much. So uh, I want to tell you a story this evening, hopefully uh, end this evening. I know everyone's waiting out to do the casino and the entertainment, but uh, you're probably wondering what this picture is. So this is a picture of um, a mentor of mine, Les Michelson, and that's me in 1978. So in 1978, I invented email. Now, this has become a very interesting set of news stories that have come about, and I'll come back to it, but uh, I want to share with you what I went through in 1978 and the spirit of what I believe is still true today, that innovation can occur anytime, any place, by anybody. And that's the story I want to share with you tonight. So uh, in 1970, my parents had come to the United States. Uh, I was seven years old, and we moved originally to Patterson, New Jersey. As some of you know, it's one of the poorest cities still in the United States. And uh, every penny my parents earned, they would try to get into the better school system. So eventually we moved to Livingston, New Jersey. And my mom worked at a university called the University of Medicine Dentistry in New Jersey, which is located in Newark. And uh, she had a colleague who's the gentleman on, on the left there called Les Michelson. Les was a particle physicist from Brookhaven, and he had a very small lab at UMDNJ, which was one of the earliest labs to do computing. And um, I had just finished up an interesting course. I was 14 at NYU in learning programming, one of the, you know, one of the early uh, opportunities for youth to learn programming. And, uh, I had sort of become bored with high school. My mom introduced me to Les, and he said, would you like to create an electronic mail system? And I thought it was about sending electricity through paper, so I thought it was going to vaporize paper. That's how new those words meant. And um, the, if anyone over the age of 40 will remember that we all had what was called the inner office mail system, right? Uh, which was the inbox, the outbox, the address book, forwarding, actually carbon copies, all these things, these elements which were fundamentally a system. And, and uh, Dr. Michelson, Les Michelson's challenge was, could you create the electronic version of this? So that's what I began doing. Uh, and um, to those of you, uh, if you can read it, there's a program up there in Fortran called email. So that term was never used prior to 1978. So I coined that term, and this became the main uh, subroutine of email and ended up becoming 50,000 lines of code uh, over those three years. And it was the entire electronic version of the inner office mail system. And um, a couple of interesting things was not only did I have a good mentor, but the environment that I worked in was a very collegial environment. Most of the people were 20 to 50 years older than me, but all of them accepted me as an equal. There was never any distinction that I was a 14-year-old. And um, there's a, a woman in that picture, Stella Oleksiak, and this was one of the local press that I'd gotten in 1980. And Stella was one of the uh, people who convinced the uh, school board and the principal and the superintendent that, hey, we should have this thing called independent study to let this kid go from Livingston 30 miles to Newark and travel, which was radical in 1978. But uh, there was another very, very important piece. Um, and here's actually the copyright for email in 1982. And what's interesting about this, in 1980, uh, first of all, there was no concept of uh, IP protection for software. In, in the Copyright Act of 1976 was amended in 1980 to allow people to actually copyright software. It was seen as literary work. So at that time, I filed for the copyright, got the first copyright, and submitted 50,000 lines of code, which today, by the way, on February, they were admitted to the Smithsonian. So if people want to go see it, all the code and all the samples are there. So this was the first copyright for email, um, August 30th, 1982. So that uh, brought me to MIT, and uh, Shaker said I did, did a number of degrees there. And in 1993, um, what was interesting about the work I did with email was it really uh, founded in me this whole concept of systems, right? The world is not just any one component, but it was a system of interlocked parts, you know, the inbox, the outbox. But in 1993, I couldn't get away from email. In the midst of my PhD, um, the, the White House was starting to receive about 5,000 emails per day. 
and when Clinton was in office, the way they managed emails was they literally used interns who would read these emails by hand and categorize them, and they had 147 different buckets. And so the idea was obviously emails doubling every month, and you're gonna, not going to fill up the White House with a bunch of interns. Uh, but uh, maybe Clinton, but anyway, <laughs> it's a different issue. But um, So anyway, uh, so, the, so, the, so the con this contest was run. Could you build a system to automatically categorize email? I was in grad school. Um, ended up winning the contest, beat five other public companies, and I uh, went to MIT and I said, look, I did this at MIT time, you guys want it? And Lita Nelson, who's a technology licensing officer, said, well, I don't think email management's gonna be a big issue, we'll give you a waiver. So it's great, so I got a waiver and we went and started a company, Echo Mail. And um, so it started out of working with Clinton, and one of the interesting things was we started getting lots of customers. And uh, in 2000, we thought we'd go to the campaign uh, because we were doing both email management on the inbound and doing email marketing. So we thought, hey, you know, the, the, one of the campaigns, either the uh, Bush campaign and or the Gore campaign would need this. So we went to actually the Gore campaign and, you know, obviously the guy who invented the internet should definitely be inter interested in this. And it was fascinating. The Gore campaign said, look, we don't need this. We know everything about email. We don't really want to work, work with this. Now the Bush campaign, you know, the dumb guy, uh, he was actually very interested in this, very open, and they embraced it. And they said, well, this is great. We could actually use email with grassroots campaign. If people know, for better or worse, Carl Rowe, he was, very, he was a direct marketer, and he was very, very into one-on-one uh, -on -one campaigning. So they literally integrated email into their campaign strategy. And now I'm not saying email is what won it for Bush, but it was, everyone knows that was an advantage that they had, and it was significant. At the same time, one of the things we did was uh, this, uh, we also, I also went to the U.S. Postal Service because if you go back to what email is, it's not text messaging, and that's been part of the recent controversy. Email is fundamentally the system. It's the electronic mail system, and I always felt that the post office should be in this, and I thought it would be a great revenue generator for them. So in, uh, in around the same period, I went to the Postal Service, met with some of the senior officials. I said, you know, you guys should be involved in email. They said, no, 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 we're a $50 billion company. Don't you know who we are? Uh, you know, we're bigger than Walmart, we don't need to be involved in email. And I'll come back to that story. So it was very interesting dealing with these different concepts about email as a system. Um, in 2003, you're probably wondering why this picture is up here, I came back to MIT and I'd always had another interest, having grown up in India, my grandmother was one of these village shamans who could look at your face and predict what was going on inside of you. And after I sort of did the echo mail stint, gave back to MIT and I, I ran into an old colleague of mine who said, look, Shiva, you need to come back and finish your PhD. There's a new field called systems biology. And the aim of systems biology is to model the whole human body ground up, interconnecting all the molecular reactions. And um, so I ended up doing my PhD in that and built a model of the whole cell, uh, which we call Cytosol. And in 2009, I went back to India because I was always interested in Indian systems of medicine, went back and studied the Siddha system of medicine. And uh, what I found out was that Siddha, going back to this, was, was actually the first systems biology. The ancient Indians actually looked at the entire body as a system. And the idea was, coming back, when I came back in 2010, I said, could I take some of those concepts and actually combine, essentially bring the yogic age to the molecular age? And what we ended up doing was we said, could we model the whole body? And it's a cartoon saying, in order to do that, you need a computer. And we recently just launched a company called Cytosolve. 